Welcome back to Three Months of Modal Logics here with Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing our series in November on temporal logic, looking at dense temporal logic. If you haven't checked out the video on the density of time, now might be a good time to do that. So, if time is dense, that means that between any two moments of time, there is another moment. It is infinitely divisible. This is going to be in direct contradiction to forward and backward induction. This system, which we're going to call QT, can be mapped onto the rational numbers, all numbers that can be expressed basically as a ratio or as a fraction. Since there's always going to be another fraction in between any two fractions, that's going to mean that the rational numbers are dense and our system QT is going to be dense as well. If you think there are an infinite number of instants between any two instants, then you think that time is dense. And this is going to be one of your options for the axiomatic system you may use to work with time. So let's take a look. The temporal density axiom is what's going to kind of define this. Basically, this axiom tells us that time is dense, that no instant has an immediate predecessor or successor. If something will happen in the future, then there is a moment after now and before that thing happens. So, if something will happen at what you might think would be the next moment, there still is a moment in between now and that supposed next moment where the thing hasn't happened yet and it's not now anymore. And if it will always be the case that something will always be the case, then that thing will always be the case. In my mind, the first one with the kind of will always be is a little confusing to understand, but it's a direct corollary just using transposition and kind of our modal temporal, change of temporal quantifier axiom to switch those around. Those two statements are just corollaries of each other. And it seems to me the easiest one to understand is going to be that second one that if something's going to happen at some point in the future, that means that there is another point in the future where it's still going to happen before that thing happens. All right, let's take a look and see if we can make sense of that. So FP implies FFP means that if something will happen in the future, then there is always an instant between that thing happening and now. So let's say something's going to happen in the future. There's always going to be some instant such that that thing is still in the future, but it's no longer now. That's what FFP is going to mean. Basically, that always between now and some point in the future, there will be another instant. Which means that, lo and behold, time is dense. Because there's always going to be an instant between now and any point in the future. All right? Hopefully that makes sense of why that implies that time is dense. Q is going to include the temporal axiom of no end, the temporal axiom of no beginning, and the temporal density axiom. Check out previous videos for more information on the axiom of no end and the axiom of no beginning. But basically, if you add these three axioms to LT, our linear temporal logic, then you're going to arrive at QT, or a timeline isomorphically similar to the rational numbers. If you think that time can be infinitely divided, this may be the system for you. But it's not the only system that can be infinitely divided. And there's one more system we're going to look at here. It's going to be complete temporal logic, or RT. Those of you who understand a little bit about mathematics may be able to guess what set of numbers that corresponds to. But stay tuned tomorrow for that video and watch a new video every single day for three months here with Carnades.org and the three months of modal logic. Stay skeptical, everybody.